Welcome everyone and welcome to all of you who are joining us at the Centre of Christian Spirituality as we reflect on the Gospel reading for the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, continuing the story from last week in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed seed among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three, amount, with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowd all these things in parables. Without a parable he told them nothing. This was to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will, be th and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father, let anyone with ears listen. There are a few things about this particular parable that relate to what we said last week. That This is part of that parabolic discourse and that the parabolic discourse, um, they're about the, the parables are about the kingdom. And one of the key themes that runs through so often is why people didn't respond to the Lord. And again, that's what we have here. And the issue here, I think, is a little different. I think last week the people fell away altogether, as it were. Uh, but I think this, this one is more about the, the mixed response within uh, the Catholic community. That really uh, what's happening here is, well, do you get rid of the people that um, aren't measuring up, as it were? And I think that the, um, there are three things that need to be remembered here. First is patience with these people, tolerance. And the last thing is 
that the Lord will sort it out. That there's a, another eschatological theme running through often in these parables, namely, things will be all right in the end. Uh, remember with the sower, it was going to be a hundredfold and sixtyfold and thirtyfold. So a hope, hope is an important aspect uh, of these things. So the parable of the weeds and the wheat is about that mixed response within the Catholic community. How do we handle it? Do we just root everybody out? No, the Lord will sort that out at the end. Uh, and our task is to be tolerant and to um, be patient with those around us. There are a couple of other parables there, namely the parable about the mustard scene and the parable of the yeast. They're both things about a very small beginnings and abundant endings. In other words, the church was looking very small and difficult, but it was going, the kingdom was going to bring about an abundance. And again, with the leaven there, uh, one of the commentators said you could feed a hundred people on the leaven, on what could be produced by that much leaven. But it, again, um, it's making the point, some, a small amount ends up with something that is great. So I think God working within the kingdom, um, but letting some things stand, and those things will be sorted out um, uh, in the end. Mm. Yeah. The, the sense of abundance was something that captured my imagination. And I'm thinking an abundance not just of food, but a place for everyone. That around the table and, and the kingdom of heaven seems to be the, a place like that, where there's sufficient for everyone, a place for all. And yet, there was that distraction I had in the early part of it, David, where, um, you know, it's those who are not living up to the mark are going to be like the, 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 the weeds and bundled up and, and thrown into the fire. And it just, I mean, that's a challenge, mm. yeah, a, a challenge. I'm not quite sure how to bring it both together because we, we're in this sense of, uh, you know, we're called to do our best, as best we can. Yes, we, we will uh, flag at times and fail, but if we keep on the mark, you know, you've said before, perfection, David, it's, it's that constant going. So we go, as you were saying last week, from the 30 to the 60 to a, to 100. So in that, the, you know, it's the way of life of following Jesus is costly, isn't it? It demands a lot. Mm couple of scary lines in this passage I think the gnashing of teeth always makes me wince but the thing that struck me this time was the concept of that tiny mustard seed and I feel as though um, I'm called to make sure that those mustard seeds grow into the huge trees I think I'm called to bring about the kingdom in the way I can in my life um, I'll just say it does change you when you recognise the power as a parent and um, now with a grandchild and you do things thinking, I know it sounds a bit spooky John, but you do things thinking I may not see the fruits mm. of this fantastic mm. labour mm. but because I am so committed to the love of this child to grow into the future, I will plant the tree that I may yeah. not see grow, yeah. but yeah. that future generations mm. will. Mm. And to me that that's the, an analogy with these parables around the mustard tree, that the birds of the um, uh, sky will find their nests. And to me the building of the kingdom is something I may never see, but I must work towards that. Mm. And the other one is the sweetness of the yeast, <laughs> because you can have a lot of flour, but without the yeast, seriously, I'm a bread person myself. I love bread, and if you've ever made bread, when you smell that yeast growing in the bread, it is irresistible. So uh, these parables, I think, calling me to, in what way am I the yeast in my community, in my life, in my work, to build that harvest mm. um, and to keep concentrating on being the wheat that will be in the harvest. <laughs> Don't worry too much about the weeds, otherwise you're going to get very distracted. Keep making sure that the wheat's growing yeah. to build yeah. this kingdom. Yeah. 
This is a, it's very beautiful. I know there's yeah. gnashing of yeah. teeth, but there's great beauty yeah, in this there passage is. as well. Yeah. Thanks for that, Virginia, and thank you, David. We invite you to take a few moments now just to reflect yourselves on what you have heard in the gospel itself. You have heard David, Virginia, and I, but it's important that it becomes you. What is your take? What is it in, in the gospel reading that, that jumps out at you and inspires you and challenges you? Just take a few moments. Well, after those moments of reflection, it's time for us to listen again to the reading of the Gospel of this Sunday. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So, when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? Jesus answered, he answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, do you want us to go and gather them? He replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will co collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father, let anyone with ears listen. Well, I've got a, a, a extraordinary um, idea, really. Uh, when I say extraordinary, I didn't expect to be prompted by this concept of the devil. And the devil, when I'm reflecting on this, is sometimes, um, I think this passage is saying to me, it takes time to build the kingdom and sometimes if it doesn't happen quickly enough or instantly enough the temptation is to stop to give up but and hearing it today I think what I'm going to try and do is to persevere so sometimes the devil in the ear is oh, don't don't keep doing that don't try that don't because I can't see the results quickly enough so it's that um, I hear today to 
this work of building the kingdom is about persevering, um, even though you may not see the results. When I began doing the Lexio Reflection with Virginia, with mums in the, in the schools of the diocese a number of years ago, we always pointed out to the parents how hearing the reading a second time and often with a different voice, you got attracted to something else in the reading. And when I heard you this morning, David, um, read that gospel for us again, it was something in the, in the parable about the mustard seed that really struck me that it became a tree that grew so big that all the birds of the air were able to find a home. And I started, it began to go through my mind, what is it then that Jesus excludes from his kingdom? And he doesn't seem to include anyone but wants to invite all to be part of it and to find a home there. So the big challenge for me then, when I question people and their actions is those words of Pope Francis, who am I to judge? And maybe that's the challenge for me to reflect upon this week. Yes, I, I was interested in the mixed group, the fact that within the community you've got um, the, these two cases. And I mentioned earlier that it is journeying that is the thing. It doesn't really matter where you are on the journey as long as you keep journeying. Mm. But there's a lot of literature in our spiritual tradition about people that stop journeying. Mm. Uh, lukewarmness is the sort of um, word that has been used. And in, in Revelation, I would rather you be hot and cold, mm. but being lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. Um, and I, I think there are people like that. The, the effect of lukewarmness is that you just go through the motions. I think you mentioned, Virginia, about the importance of the heart yeah. earlier on. Yeah. So that people can do that. People can do that in marriage, I think. You can go through the motions, as mm -hmm. it were, and uh, the love that was there has been lost, yeah. and people stop working on it. So I felt um, what I would, would do was have that patience and tolerance um, towards those people who, um, who had stopped journeying and to try to get them to, to, to re-journey. And I feel that, looking back when I was in responsibility for putting people in places, that sometimes you did feel you were putting a person there who had stopped travelling, mm. and that that person wasn't going to help the people to keep travelling, yeah. um, but just by going through the motions, perhaps they would help them by doing the things that um, might help them along. Mm. But I think leadership, you have to have people that are travelling. Mm. So I'd, I'd like to have tolerance and patience um, in working with those people. Well, we have openly shared with you our response to the gospel passage of this Sunday. We invite you to take a few moments now to, to dig into that word of God and what is it that challenges you to allow to become a part of you as you journey through this week. Not what it might be for someone else, but what it is for you personally. Just take a few moments to reflect on that. Each one of us has come up with something that we deem appropriate for us to respond to and make a part of our lives over this coming week. Great thoughts, great intentions, but that's not enough, is it? We need to just to ask the Spirit of God to be with us, to accompany us and to keep nudging us as we journey through this week, attempting to respond and be faithful to uh, the challenge we've set before us. So take a moment to pray that that Spirit will be with you, to guide you and to prompt you. It has been our privilege to share this time with you this morning at the Centre for, for Christian Spirituality and we invite you to join us again next Sunday when we will move from the 16th Sunday to the 17th Sunday in ordinary time. 
For now, while thanking you and inviting you to encourage others who might benefit from joining us in prayer and reflection, uh, to conclude with the opening prayer of the assigned to this Sunday's liturgy, the opening prayer for the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. <laughs>